Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns they're going to be selling in their May of 2017 premiere auction. And there is a very scarce one here today, which is a Luger. Not normally scarce, however, this happens to be a Mexican Luger, which is quite scarce. And there's some interesting, I think this sheds some interesting light on the military history of Mexico. I thought it'd be cool to take a quick look at it. So. Mexico was ruled by a guy named Porfirio Diaz for just about 30 years, from the 1880s until 1910 or 1911. And he was a general. Um, he had fought in a number of Mexico's campaigns uh, in the middle of the 1800s. He fought against the French, among others, and rose to a position of executive power as president of the country. And one of the things that he is known for, well, he's a controversial figure. He brought stability to the country, was almost certainly fairly corrupt, you know, kind of run of the mill. But among other things, and what I want to touch on today is he was very much interested in making Mexico into a substantial military power. Not, not a huge army, but he wanted Mexico's military to be cutting edge and modern and technologically capable, well organized. He wanted it to be a very effective force, not necessarily a huge one. And as part of that, he was interested in modern small arms and modern heavy arms as well. So he was, um, Mexico was investing in modern artillery. Um, Manuel Mondragon, uh, one of the domestic Mexican arms producers, worked with both light arms and heavy artillery. Uh, one of the most common things from this period is the Mondragon semi-auto rifle, which the, the Mexicans contracted for. There ended up being problems with those. They were supposed to equip the, the Mexican cavalry, but never ended up doing so. Uh, but one of the other things that Porfirio Diaz did was actually test the Luger. So there are only a couple of these guns that are known to exist or documented. And I think for a long time there was doubt as to their veracity because the only thing that makes them different from a standard, typical old pattern Luger, 1900 pattern Luger, is that they are marked Ejercito Mexicano on the side, Mexican Army. And the engraving that's done, that engraving, is not standard DWM engraving. So it wasn't done at the factory in Germany. It appears that those, those markings, that Mexican army marking was done by the Mexican army after they received the guns, which makes them a little bit harder to substantiate, to verify. That said, they're all in the same serial number range. There is a, a serial number range of 11,000 and 12,000 series guns in the old model uh, Luger range that are kind of all missing and there are only a couple examples known. They, a few of them are guns that went to Chile for testing. So all of these Mexican Lugers are in that serial number range, as are a very small number of Russian trials or Russian uh, commercial production guns that have been located and, and verified. So the suspicion is that these were probably primarily, the serial block was probably primarily Russian guns that are simply not accessible to us uh, here in Europe and the US. But, there was a batch of Lugers sent to Mexico. And what's interesting to verify this is uh, there is a, a report from a British military attache in Washington who had been in Mexico and reported back in uh, July of 1905 to the British government on Mexican testing of the Luger. He said they tried it out and they actually really liked it. Uh, it. One of the points that the attache brought up was that the Mexicans were actually looking to adopt the 765 Luger. Now at this point, the Luger was available in two calibers, 7.65 and 9mm, and the German military, for example, didn't want the small caliber. They had actually pushed for development of a larger cartridge, which was the 9mm Luger. They were going to adapt, adopt that. Um, the US military looked at both, but was kind of leaning towards the larger cartridge. And this British military attaché pointed out that it's interesting that in Mexico, where these things are going to be used day and night because there's all sorts of chaos and strife, uh, they were actually looking at the small caliber gun, and maybe that says something interesting about its efficacy. At any rate, there were apparently also, it seems that they also tested the long barrel, um, an equivalent to the German artillery Luger, because this attache also notes that the Mexicans were considering or planning to uh, re-equip all of their artillery and cavalry troops with these instead of carbines, and that would suggest a long-barreled variant as well as the standard sidearm. Now, this never ended up happening. Uh, Porfirio Diaz was thrown out of power in 1911, and because of budgetary and presumably bureaucratic reasons, the Lugers never got purchased. The, the next 
the, the modern semi-auto handgun that the, the Mexican military did purchase was actually first the 1902 military model of Colt, uh, followed by Colt 1911 model pistols, and, and the Mexicans would be would, would center on the 1911 as a standard military sidearm when it became available. But it's really interesting that, like so many other countries in the world, they did actually test, um, very favorably test the Luger, and came very close to standardizing on the Luger. Now, beyond the Mexican army marking, there isn't anything that was done custom to these pistols. Uh, it is a standard old pattern, or 1900 pattern Luger. So it has a flat mainspring, it has dished out toggles, it has the slightly smaller extractor, um, the, the short barrel, 7.65 caliber. But it's its association to Mexico that makes it interesting. There are a lot of interesting guns uh, that the Mexican military at this time adopted. Obviously, the Mondragon self-loading rifle. Um, they were one of the, if not like the only country that actually adopted a carbine version of the Nagant revolving rifle. Um, That's a nine-shot revolving carbine that actually had a gas seal, so it didn't have any blow-by issues. Um, those were Mexican. Those were actually uh, rurales, the, the rural police uh, issued guns. Lugers, Colts. They, they were on the cutting edge of machine guns at this period as well. So a lot of interesting stuff going on in a country that people, a lot of people, probably wouldn't normally associate with uh, cutting edge military firearms. If you'd like to add this one to your own collection or use it to start your own collection, take a look at the description text below. As Rock Island is, of course, selling it, you'll find a link to their description page, their catalog page there with photos and description and everything else that you need to place a bid on it if you'd like to. Thanks for watching.